viewers and welcome to the review of the Western European Leagues. Uh, big packed. Didn't see all that many games due to it being a very short weekend and me being home for Sunday, but I think I caught up on most of the important stuff. And before we go into uh, the games, let's look at the headlines. I mean, it is pretty <laughs> clear what the, head, the main headline in Spain is. Barcelona on a title favorites, imperious form against uh, Real Sociedad, who are one of the top teams in Spain. They absolutely annihilated them. And I think it is not inconceivable that Barcelona is actually winning this title, which seemed beyond them just even a month ago. Uh, but yeah, it is what, uh, what it is. Atletico though gets a win in kind of sloppy fashion. Uh, the other big story is, of course, uh, Sevilla, who had a pretty good week overall, then drop points, but still come out with a positive because their goalkeeper scored the late equalizer. Uh, very remarkable goal as well. Speaking of perfect weeks, I'm wearing PSG. PSG basically had the best possible week. Their two main rivals have been put into place really um, very comf comfortably and that coming after this huge loss against Nantes um, at the last weekend. So PSG basically showing, yeah, we struggled there, but now we are taking it for real. And in Portugal, also very uh, interesting development with, uh, no, not an interesting development, I mean, Benfica is back on track and Sporting gets uh, another big win. So let's move into a big win and a 16 year old is making his debut uh, one of the youngest players ever to play on the top flight level any case uh, in the midweek uh, last week you know Champions League was before then Sevilla plays against Elche I uh, had not much trouble in defeating them 2-0 in the zero after Suso assist and um, uh, Vasquez secure the win Vasquez with a goal in the 89th which meant that Sevilla really put some distance between them and Real Sol Sociedad and uh, top four from last season are very much set to be the top four this season as well as with Elche is the other uh, makeup game that they're losing so Elche really really looking now very much down and having to fight their way out of relegation trouble and then what happened on, on the weekend? Yeah, first of all, Celta Vigo, Real Madrid. This was one of those games where I thought, yeah, Celta can be a fun team to play. However, Iago Aspas has not scored yet. Um, yeah, but if Toni Kroos plays that great passes to Karim Benzema, which he did twice, uh, there is no, uh, there is uh, no uh, normal team in La Liga that is gonna stop uh, stop them. Benzema really being the difference maker. Uh, out of the first chance, more or less, Santemino pulls from back. Then uh, laid on, there was a free kick for Iago Aspas that Casemiro actually deflects with his head onto the post, and then in stoppage time, uh, Asensio makes it three one and uh, Real Madrid. Never really playing all that great, but the it's the individual players, especially in midfield and Bonsema up front. They are playing absolutely great uh, season. And that's maybe sounds or something for going down uh, the road a little bit. I'm still curious how the Classico will actually play out next time it is played. Valladolid Sevilla. Uh, Sevilla gives up a penalty uh, late in the second half after being in full control of, of, of the game. And it was really, really weird to see Sevilla play in blue against Valladolid, but okay. Uh, it makes sense, but it was just weird to get behind that. Uh, Oriano scores the penalty and it was really looking like um, Valladolid can hang on. However, in the last minute, and I implore you, look for, for the goal that Bono scores. It is uh, in many ways so unlikely because there's the corn, corn, the, uh, corn, corn kick and uh, three defenders of Valladolid actually want that the ball goes out. But Kunde is smart, smart enough, sees it. Uh, it just hit the post, it comes out. Uh, he plays it back to Bono, who has a really, really great shot to put it into the, to, to the net. And yeah, uh, you don't see it uh, a lot that a goalkeeper scores the equalizer. And it ends 1 1. Overall drops, uh, points drop, bro. bro. <laughs> Forget about it, it's late. <laughs> points drop for Sevilla. Um, but uh, still, they will 
most likely make it into the top four. Atletico Madrid uh, against Alaves, forget about the first half. Second half, um, a lot better and Kieran Trippier gets the cross into Luis Suarez. And I actually think the moment that Kieran Trippier was eliminated from the squad, that's when Atletico Madrid started to falter a little bit. Uh, and then especially with the double against Levante, that's where they really, really, really started st stumbling. But they get the goal through Luis Suarez. Uh, half the chances, uh, I think uh, it was Pacheco who hit the crossbar or... Uh, uh, so uh, but there was a crossbar and a Pacheco involved. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, and, you know, they should have put the game game away and then lay, laid on uh, Savage, who already was sent off against Chelsea. Uh, right, dry rifle so with his elbow, goes into um, an attacker's face. It's a penalty after, after war. Uh, in the first uh, half, it was all, all already a war decision. Uh, where war, not war, war. Uh, decision where uh, the referee decided, yeah, it was a handball for the Alaves defender. However, first the athletic player made an offensive foul, penalty, and I, maybe I was actually my wife was looking, was, was looking how, how I'm doing. It was rather exciting because this was kind kind of one of those moments where his whole season could hinge on if that penalty score, Atletico Madrid is not 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 gonna win, and Barcelona with the win could well have uh, cruised past. Uh, uh, Atleti and Atleti didn't have any easy games as of late, that's for sure. But Oblak very nicely saves that, that one and gives Atletic Madrid a vital win there uh, to put them ahead of Barcelona for sure. Uh, but I have to say, Barcelona absolutely, absolutely imperious. The way they uh, fillet, filleted. How, how do you say in English? Uh, Real says that that was super impressive. Uh, the least impressive was probably the Jersey matchup because A, I think Barcelona could show up there in their re re regular kit. Yes, uh, Real Sociedad might have to play with uh, blue pants, so yeah. But the black didn't look all that great, let's put it that way. They, it would have been better if they play in yellow. I, I come more and more around. Yellow is the perfect away color. In any case, it took a while, but once it got going, uh, there was no, no no stopping. I mean, uh, or already, uh, I think it was a shot by uh, Dembélé, who likes to miss his chances, but the ball falls back to Griezmann, makes a one in the 30th and then a Messi with a wonderful pass. And it's again one of those. Everyone is converging on to, on to Messi for it. They forget about Serginho Dest. And Messi plays him, him the ball. It's not offside because the defenders are not uh, on, on the same line. 1-0 Barcelona, 37, 2-0. Uh, After the half, Dest adds his third. Messi, of course, also needs to get in a goal uh, on a score sheet now that he is the player who has played the most games for Bar Barcelona. Musa Dem uh, Musa Dembele, Us Usman Dem Dembele. Uh, there are so many Dem Dembele's out there, I'm getting all com confused. Has a goal disallowed, but he gets his one, and it is already 5-0 because uh, before Baren uh, Baranechea Muguruza scores probably the best goal of the, of the evening. Now, I actually think that's the sixth one through Messi. Uh, that was Guardiola type Barcelona. So many quick pa passing moves, and in the end, it's the classic Alba to Messi, 89th minute, 6 1. I mean, after this the destruction, and we know that the Russell's that is a really, really, really good team. Uh, we, it meant that in the table, Barcelona cuts back the lead to four, po uh, the lead of Atleti to four points. I want more Krugerche. This 6 1 was such an imperious win that the rating shot up even more, and Barcelona are now title favorites. 47% ahead of Atletico Madrid. I think this is the first time that uh, uh, that Bar Barcelona are favorites this season, at least first first time since the very beginning of the season. Let's put it that way. Uh, as I say, the top four are, are, are the top four, uh, and on the bottom, it's also rather. I mean, it is tight. The only one that really seems uh, also as is Uesca, but I think Alaves, Eva, Elche, Valladolid, they are all still fighting against re uh, re relegation there. Um, and if you look at the expected standings, yes, it is head neck to neck between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, but Barcelona just a tad better, a little bit more uh, points on average. Real Madrid. Also, not giving, giving, giving up, and I'm really curious, as I said, about the Clásico, because uh, Ronald Koeman got a lot right against Real Sociedad. I want him to prove me 
how he can do against a side like Real Madrid. Um, Real Sociedad Betis Villarreal seem like the Europa League teams, then uh, Bilbao uh, and Celta. Granada, uh, who are doing well in, in, in the Europa League, are just midfield at, at, at the moment, but it's also not too surprising, and we talked already about the relegation battle. After the um, uh, international break, we actually come back with a really, really exciting game, Sevilla against Atletico Madrid, another one where there could be a lot the lead could be cut really, really, really short. Or Atletico Madrid uses the the uh, break to regroup. I also Granada via Real. That is between two Europa League teams, so that's an interesting one. Barcelona should have it easy against Valladolid, and then we have a no game on Saturday evening uh, from La Liga, and on Wednesday we have Real Sociedad against Athletic Club. And of course, a big Basque derby. But why is this played on Wednesday, and why is there no game on Saturday evening? Yeah because we have to play last year's Copa del Rey final again between Real Sociedad and Athletic Club. And that, we have finally, we will finish off the 19-20 uh, the season. And it's the first of two cup finals for Bilbao within uh, a month. And Real Sociedad has issued a beautiful uh, cup final jersey that is already unfortunately sold out in my sizes because I really would have liked to have that one. That was the Real Sociedad jersey that I really would like to have. Moving on to France, also cup action. Uh, PSG against Lille. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. And can I say I really dislike the French Cup. Both teams play with the same sponsors, just switched around on the uh, uh, Jersey de Credit Agricole is usually for the home team. And uh, the other one is for, 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 for the away team. I mean, the French Cup had all kinds of weird rules. I, I remember when all of them had to wear Adidas and then PSG, who is the Nike team, had to wear suddenly Adidas jerseys. Really, really, really weird. PSG the early lead and Mbappé with a penalty puts more or less the game away and Mbappé very late later on adds a third after Yaziki actually misses a penalty or I better say Kayla Navas saved another penalty. Kayla Navas the underrated hero of PSG uh, and so PSG is next to uh, through, through the next round and given that there is not much competition left yes Monaco and, Le and Lyon but um, let's see uh, could well end up with PSG winning at least two trophies again since there's no Coupe de la Ligue this time around. In the league, Monaco actually very Im impressive. Uh, Jovetic misses early on a penalty, but a minute later he actually scores his goal in the 13th. And then all the goals from by Monaco in the second half were actually really nice, nice nicely taken. Uh, Chiumeni starts it, Diop also uh, directly, and then Diata really, all three really nice goals. Very impressive performance by Monaco, who might actually be the team that plays the best uh, um, soccer in all of league uh, at, uh, at the moment. Uh, we had a big relegation uh, fight between Nantes and Lorient. Two goals score, one very early for Nantes, one very late for Lorient. It ends 1-1. Lille manages to lose against Nîmes. Uh, Nîmes typically, like you would expect, um, a bottom dweller being solid at the back and actually scoring for uh, their chances. Uh, Kone in the 12th, then uh, Jeka had equalized and then Ripa just before the half makes it 2-1. Lille cannot show much, very late on they have three chances but cannot find the equalizer and it's again that a team on the very bottom beats a team on the very top uh, like we had last week PSG not now it's Lille against against Nîmes. Uh, league uh, is really really unpredictable in that way. And then the second really impressive performance this weekend, it was, I mean, Barcelona against Real Sociedad was probably more impressive, but PSG for a good 60 minutes completely outclassed Lyon. Uh, and it was again Mbappé, when he turns turn, turn, turn on, there's no one going to uh, stop, stop in the 15th, he makes a 1-0. Then Danilo uh, gets a rare goal in the 32nd, Di Maria after the half adds a third, and then Mbappé in the 52nd put the game to rest. It could have been tight again because Slimani uh, and Cornet pull two back. However, um, Kelo Navas also can uh, save a few and it ends overall with a fully deserved 4-2, which means that paired with the loss 
uh, of Lille PSG suddenly find them in first spot and very much in control of the league. They had a week, uh, a week where they beat, uh, beat Lille in the cup. Lille, of course, not playing maybe full team, a full strength team there. And then Lyon uh, away from, from home, the biggest contem um, contenders for, for a title. They have been really outclassed within one week. Lots of changes everywhere. Uh, most crucial with the win for Nîmes, they overtake Nantes and maybe have a prayer. Dijon really looks down, down, down. So it's potentially a three wheel race between Lorient, Nîmes and Nantes of who will stay uh, up, who will uh, go down and who will go in this relegation promotion playoff. Also, I have not mentioned much, but Marseille losing 3-0 to Nice and uh, therefore uh, falling down to sixth place behind uh, uh, Arcelance. Uh, we have in the expected standings PSG now firm favorites four points ahead head head of Lille. What a loss does to you! Uh, it's really really uh, surprising in in a way. And there is a clear there are four teams up top that are at the moment within four points. It's a, it will be a little bit tighter uh, within six uh, no looser within six points at the end of the season according to my predictions. Then this broad midfield blob and then uh, towards the end Nantes, Lorient, Nîmes for uh, in the relegation battle. Um, after we come back from international duty, PSG against Lille. Probably a title decided. If PSG wins that one, I don't think they will be look, looking bad. Back, uh, Lyon has to play at Lens, which is not easy in Monaco uh, against Metz. So all happening or, or already on Saturday. Uh, and then there are not too many big games down there. It's all then for more, more or less for relegation promotion. Uh, we'll end our video in Portugal. We actually had the joy of watching the first half of Sporting against King Kimoresh. And from what I could tell them, um, this was uh, the more in interesting half. I mean, Sporting really, really dominant. However, cannot uh, um, convert their dominance into goals. A goal by Tomas is uh, ruled out because of uh, the ball was in the out in the build-up. It was, it was really, it took a long time. And then when Inacio uh, scores the goal, you think it's offside, but it was not all offside. Again, VAR, VAR decisions, but Sporting getting the 1-0 win fully, fully deserved. And, as I said, uh, a 16-year-old came on, Dario Esugo. He had his birthday on the 14th of uh, March, turning 6, 16, and on 20th he made his uh, debut for Sporting. So, even uh, younger than the Mus uh, Musoku, the kid from Dortmund, a uh, pretty special uh, story right, right there. Uh, we had, of course, Porto winning 2-1 at Portimonense, and then um, Benfica, Winning 2-0 at Braga, however, that was helped largely by a yellow red to Franz Sergio in the 39th, and then Benfica scores the two goals just before the half. Uh, Seferovic assists Silva to make it 2-0, um, and right after the half, they turn, turn it around. Silva assists uh, Seferovic to make it 2-0 in the 56th, and that ends that, meaning that Benfica could uh, leapfrog uh, Braga. Sporting and Porto still up there and it seems like the top three will remain the top, top three with Sporting and Porto going into the Champions League. Benfica needs to go in qual qualification. Uh, Sporting, of course, very clear on course for uh, the championship. And again, we don't talk about much, but I'm always amazed how many changes are on the bottom of, of the table every week throws up a new last place team and uh, teams that were uh, seemed down and buried then move up again. Nacional at the moment and uh, Mar Maritimo, two teams from, from the islands are um, slated to go down. Um, we see this also in the expected standings where we can re really see that the top is the, there. Every, every, everything is clear. Sorry, more range, more, more, more range or whatever. It then gets very, very fuzzy and everything unclear, only, only Maritimo Nacional, a little bit darker in the shades in the relegation zone than the other teams. Uh, the games for uh, after the international break, there, there are no, no fixed dates yet, so I cannot tell you for now. In any case, it was very interesting uh, in the... Uh, this, this week what happened in Western Europe. Let me know what you thought about the games in there. Give me a thumbs up and try this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.